it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. as well. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you for joining us tonight on this teleconference. The Lord is good and we give him praise and we give him glory for all his blessings, his goodness, his mercies towards us. And we have a, we serve a great big wonderful God. Always victorious, always watching over us. So this, this, we have a a series of prayer, power of prayer, and today we're going to start with power prayer, the power of prayer, and the topic today is the purpose for praying. Purpose for praying. So we're going to look at um, man of God who has prayed to God, trusted in the Lord, look up to God, call upon Him, and God. To his mercies, his love and his grace, answer and deliver. Prayer is a great tool. Prayer is the most, it's the most greatest tool that we have on this earth. As men, we can't survive without prayer. Prayer is the key. Without prayer, we can't make it. Because prayer is everything. Prayer, even Jesus himself, even though he was God, he prayed being a man, being found in the flesh as a man, he prayed. He prayed unto the Spirit God who he was. And God hears. And it was for an example for us to know that we must pray always. For all, in all circumstances, wherever any circumstances meet us, we should pray. So I'm just going to pray a short prayer before I go into the Word of God. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify your wonderful name. Your name alone is excellent. We worship you and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercies and for your grace and for your loving kindness. Pray, Lord, that you will lead us forth in this part of the service. Pray you will have your way. Pray you'll speak to us and direct us and help us, Lord, to be sustained acceptable hearer to your word that your word may be absorbed into our spirit and that we may use it to the praise and to the glory of your name we ask these blessings in jesus name amen amen god bless and one god is wonderful um today <coughs> finally enough i went to the house of the lord and um I was so shocked when um, uh, I sat, uh, sat in the church and then someone came and touched me and called me to the back. And when I went out to the back of the church, a uh, sister looked up at me and said, Don't you know me? Don't you, do you know who I am? And I looked at her and said, No. Quite honestly, I said, No. Um, so she said, I am sister so and so and as she said so I I just realized I said from Jamaica she said yes I said wow so I was so amazed and was so shocked and was so taken back because I haven't seen her sister in about 15 years I, can't, I didn't remember what she looks like but it was great it was a wonderful encounter what a wonderful encounter also God is good and it's a small world <laughs> Praise God. But let's go into the Word of God. And now looking at this patriot, uh, our patriot, Abraham. Abraham. 
And we'll look at um, this man Abraham, who is said to be a friend of God. Just a man, but he was said to be a friend of God, and God loved him. God loved, loved Abraham. God knew Abraham. And I think God could say of Abraham, even as he said as Jeremiah, before he was formed in the womb, I knew thee and I ordained thee. We don't realize how much God knows about us. God knows about more about us than we know about ourselves. And that's one thing that we have to think in our spirit. That God knows everything. And that we can't hide anything from God. Nothing can be hid from God. So looking at Abraham who was a patriot. A man who was, as the Bible says, was a friend of God. How did he become a friend of God? Because God, God was his maker, God was his creator, God put everything that is in Abraham in him. And God knew him even when he was among his own people. God has a mark upon Abraham. And while he was among his own people, he, God visited him and said, Abraham, his name was Abraham at that time. God later changed his name to Abraham. God said, come out from your people to a land which I will show you. Praise the Lord. And Abraham obeyed God and left him having me leaving your whole family and just go in out to a place where you know not because you heard the voice of God says come out and I will show you a place and Abraham obeyed God the first thing that we know about Abraham concerning God is that he was obedient God tell him to come out you know sometimes when we have families and with friends around us it's hard to leave them and go to somewhere else to a foreign country it's very hard to leave them there's an attachment there but Abraham honored the word of God and he came out of his Ur of the Chaldees it was called those people were idol worshippers but God saw something in Abraham and as it goes along, Abraham was told to come out. But Abraham took with him his nephew Lot. And they both came out of that, out of that nation, out there where God says to come out and go. And I will show you a land flowing with milk and honey. And so he obeyed God. And um, I'm just looking at an incident with Lot and Abraham. Where um, it says here, if I look at um, Genesis chapter 3, 13, we, we are on the subject of prayer and the power of prayer and the purpose to pray. There is a purpose to pray. And Abraham was a praying man. So the first thing we realize about Abraham is that he was obedient to God. The second thing we must acknowledge about Abraham is that he was a praying man. And we'll get to that in a while. But if I read from Genesis chapter 13, and just to give you a concept of this story, when God called Abraham, he came out of his of the land which he was, not knowing where he would go, but he know he could trust in the voice of God. So, uh, Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 onwards to verse 13, I'm going to read. And Abraham went out, Abraham went up out of Egypt. He and his wife and all that he had 
So that land that Abraham came out of was near to Egypt, or joining Egypt, or part of Egypt. He came up out of Egypt with his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. So they were going south, not north, because Egypt is at the north, so they were going south, because that's where God pointed them to go. And Abraham was very rich in silver and in gold. Can you imagine how rich he was? How God made him rich. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, unto a place where his tent had been at the beginning between Be Beela and Heli, unto the place of the altar, which he had there at first, and Abraham called the name of the Lord. And he went on to say, um, Genesis chapter, five, chapter, chapter 13, verse 5, And Lot also went with Abraham, it was Abraham, Ab with Abraham. They had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, and that they might dwell together for their substance was great. And so they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abraham, cattle, and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzites dwell then in the land. So we're looking at this story as it goes that Abraham was called to come out of his upon out of his kindred and up out of his father's house to a land where God would show him because God wanted Abraham to be separated. And when God called us, God would want us to be separated. Separated. Say so come out from among them, be he separated. God wants his people to be separated from the world. And Abraham said unto Lot, So as they was sojourning, they had so many herdsmen and they had so many cattle. Imagine they had so many cattle that maybe their cattle was intermingling and maybe they couldn't separate them or something. But there was a strife, not between Abraham and Lot, but between Abraham and Abraham's cattlemen and Lot's cattlemen. So there was, they were not getting on. There was a problem with the herd, the, the immense amount of herd and cattle that they had. They were not getting on. You know, and sometimes when we look at this story, it's, it, it, it depletes sometimes our life today because we, we, get, we, we have people among us who we can't get along with. There's something there we can't get along. For some reason or another, we can't get along with them. But look what Abraham says here. Abraham said unto Lot, Let there not be strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are brethren. So by this we realize that Abraham was a peacemaker. God called him, and you could say because God told him to come out, you could say that he was the leader of the group. He was the leader. He took his, his lot was following him. He was leading. But regardless of the fact that Abraham was leading Lot out, Abraham made himself humble and submissive in the fact that he said even though he was thinking, even though God called me and God said that this land will be mine. But however, for peace sake, you know we, we have to do a lot of things for peace sake, you know, for peace sake. 
Sometimes we must even take what is wrong for peace sake. Sometimes we must even give up our right for peace sake. And when we talk about Abraham, Abraham was not just an ordinary man. Abraham was a humble man. He was a peacemaker. And that's why he said to Lot, let that not be strife. Let us not have strife. We are brethren. Let us not have strife. We can live in peace. You know, and this is a problem with the world today. Nobody wants to submit and nobody wants to give up. Everybody wants to be right. Nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to sub give up their right. But sometimes for peace sake we, he, we need to. And Abraham did. He said, let there not be strife. I pray thee between me and thee and between thy herdsmen and my herdsmen. For we are brethren. How is it that we are brethren and there is strife? How is it? How is it that we are brethren and they, they, become, they, they become strife? Strife is growing among us. How is it? He says, Abraham continued, Is not the whole land before thee? Look. Abraham says, look. Look to the east. Look to the left. Look to the right. Look to the left. Look every side. The land is great and wide. So he says, The whole land is before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee. But here comes more of Abraham, a peacemaker. For he says, For me, if thou wilt go to the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right, then I will go to the left. How wonderful is that? You see, when we talk about Abraham, and when we talk about the patriots of all who serve God, who love God, they were not just love, they, God did not favor them just because of anything, but because they were righteous. They were peacemakers. When we look at the natural Israel, the state of Israel now, just for instance, and look what the Israel, the state of Israel is doing to the Palestinian. How they kill heartless Palestinians for no reason and they are on Palestinian land. And you think that I would be in my right mind to say I'm going to the, the land of Israel. They have no heart. Everything is covered. We don't see it in the news, but you know, the Palestinian is going through hell because of the state of Israel. And they are expect us to believe that they are descendants of Abraham, not this Abraham that we read about in Genesis chapter 3, because this Abraham we read about in Genesis chapter 3 was a peacemaker. And he said to Lot, let there not be strife between us. I pray thee, between me and thee. What happened if the state of Israel would say now, let there not be strife between us and the Palestinian? And yet everyone is saying Israel, Israel. But that's another thing. But we're on the topic of prayer and the power of prayer. It is, is not the whole land before thee, Abraham said, I pray thee, as I pray thee, separate thyself from me. If you go to the left hand, I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes. Now look at this. Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold the plains of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and even the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt as thou comest to Zohar and Lot choose him all the plains of Jordan and Lot 
journeyed east and they separated them one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of plain, pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So we look at the story how Abraham gave Lot the choice because for peace sake he told Lot, Abraham told Lot to choose where he would go. And so Lot chose the plains of Sodom. But the Bible says the men of Sodom was wicked. Even though the place was beautiful and well watered, you can imagine it was, everything was looking so beautiful and lush and beautiful and, you know, maybe it was something that attracts the eyes. But they have a way of saying not everything that glitters is gold. So Lord choose to pitch his tent towards Sodom. And the Bible says the men of Sodom was wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So you know the sin and the wickedness of Sodom was so great we may be not even able to consider, comprehend how wicked that city was. But that's where Lord choose. That's where he chose to go and dwell. And so the time come when that wickedness came up before God. And um, God says, I read um, Genesis chapter 18 when God says, I will go down there. Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. Here now we are Abraham. As he separated from Lot. And God appeared unto Abraham. And said, the wickedness, the wickedness of Sodom has come, come before me. And I'm going down to see it. But he said, I am not going to destroy this city before I, I speak to my servant, Abraham. He said, oh God love us. God could just go and just destroy the city. But if I read Genesis chapter 18... And the men rose up, these were the angels, and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. So the angels of the Lord came down and was going to look at what's going on in Sodom. Because God said, the wickedness have come up to me and I'm going down there. And Abraham went down their pathway. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, I shall, shall I hide from Abraham the things which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great nation. Since that Abraham shall surely become a great nation, and all the nation of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, God says that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in Abraham. No, we have to look at this man Abraham. Why God loved Abraham so much that through this man Abraham, God will bless all the nations of the earth through this man. This man Abraham was a man of peace. This man Abraham was a man of love. This man Abraham was a righteous man. 
and no man, no one can claim to be descendants of Abraham, being unrighteous, being without peace. And any time anyone who fights war and believes in war, they are no, nothing to do with Abraham. Abraham was a peacemaker. So God said, the Lord God Almighty, He said, shall I hide this from Abraham, what I'm going to do? I have a man. You know, God always have a man. God always have a man. And God had a man. And his name was Abraham. In the days of Sodom, when the evil was ascended up to God, up to the nostril of God, and God said, I must go down. God had a man. In the time of the flood, when God was going to flood the earth because of the wickedness of man, God don't flood, that God don't destroy the righteous with the wicked. And that's a lesson we must know. God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. And the Lord said, I shall, shall I hide this from Abraham, what I must do, seeing that he shall become great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, and that he will command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, do justice and judgment. God is a God of justice and judgment. Abraham was a son of justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So God with Abraham so the Lord said unto Abraham, God talk to Abraham. God can talk to us. He talked to Abraham. He said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come up unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men, the angels, turned their face from thence towards Sodom. And this is what I'm saying about prayer now. Abraham stood before them. Oh, glory to God. You see, Abraham is a son of righteousness, but we have to understand Abraham was a son of righteousness. The men said they turned their face towards Sodom. And Abraham drew near. Abraham stood before the Lord. Imagine now. Just imagine a man standing before God. The Almighty God, the great creator of heaven and earth. Imagine a man standing before God now and start to question God like Abraham did. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now, this, although it's put in this form, this was a, a, a supplication, a prayer. And we're talking about the purpose of prayer. Even though Abraham was communing with the angel, with the, with the, the angel of God, which is God, he's asking them, will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? A good question. Because Abraham was saying, he knows his nephew Lot, was down there and his, his nephew Lot he knew that his, his nephew Lot was love God even there there was strife so sometimes 
you can have strife among brethren, but we must have a peaceful separation. Peaceful separation. That's what Abraham had with Lot. Abraham had, didn't have any animosity towards Lot, his nephew. He loved him. And that's why Abraham stood before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Abraham said, Peradventure. Peradventure you find 50 righteous in that city. 50 in that big city of Sodom. Will thou destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of the all the earth do right? Why would God destroy the righteous with the wicked? God don't the Bible says God do not want any to perish. Lest, um, least among the righteous, God would not destroy the righteous with the wicked. He's a righteous judge. And every man get paid according to his every man. Because our God is a righteous judge. And the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous in the city, then I will spear, I will spear the place for their sake. If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, 50, I will not, I will spear it. I will not destroy it, 50. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have to take it upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Abraham acknowledged himself, I'm dust and ashes, I'm nothing. I'm but dust and ashes, but I can talk. I can talk to God. I'm dust and ashes, but I can talk to God. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I will have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. Peradventure that they be lacking five of the fifty, will thou destroy the city for the lack of five? And he said, If I find fifth forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spake again, and saying, Peradventure find forty there. He said, I will not destroy it for forty. Abraham said unto him, unto the Lord, Abraham stand before the Lord again, and said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry when I speak. Peradventure thou find thirty there. And he said, I will not do it for 30 if I find 30. So God is saying, if I find 30 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will not destroy the city. And he said, behold, now I've taken upon me to speak. Now this is prayer, you know, this is prayer. We're talking about the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is to communicate with the Almighty God. The purpose of prayer is a communication to the Almighty God. Abraham went down and said, I take it upon me to speak. Peradventure you find 20 there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20 sake. I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. And he said, Peradventure you find 10, just 10 in that city. If you find ten righteous people 
in that city will thou destroy it and he said I will not destroy for ten sake and he went on his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham and Abraham returned to his place prior there's a purpose for prior prior is connecting with the power the almighty power of God Amen. Abraham realized that he could connect to God and that he could make supplication for the righteous but God said he would not destroy the city even if he find ten righteous and imagine how bad that city was imagine a city with thousands upon thousands of people and out of those thousands upon thousands of people you can't find on your ten finger you can't find ten righteous you see the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things if God could have found ten righteous in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, he said he would not, he would not destroy the city. But he could not find ten. But the lesson for us is to realize that we can make intercession to God. Amen. And God will, we can talk to God, we can make intercession. And God will hear and God will talk to us. God said, I will not destroy for ten. And then when you look around, when you count the people that was the, the people that was in Sodom, it was just Lot, his wife, and his two children. And they were the only one. Who came out of Sodom they were the only one who because the angel tell them that the city will be destroyed because there were not ten righteous people in there but the angel told her to come out go up to the mountain up to the mountain up and the angel told him no one should look back anyone look back they shall be turned into a pillar of salt so when we think about it even though there were just four people out of Sodom and Gomorrah four people were found righteous we find that Lot's wife disobeyed the angel and when she's coming out, she's looking back. And she's looking what she's left behind. And she was turned immediately into a pillar of salt. Prior. Brethren, there is power in prior. There is power in prior. Yes. And there's a purpose for praying when we lose sight of the power of prayer we lose sight of our salvation we lose sight of the power that God has given us to overcome the power that make us more than conquerors that is the power the power of prayer May we, may God help us to realize how much power we have when we connect to God. How much change we can make, not even to our own situation, but we can, we can change the world. We can change the world. 
I made a testimony today in church and it was true. I said that last year I had so many funerals. I had to attend so many funerals that my soul was I was weary in my soul, weary of the amount of funerals which I had to attend. And most of them, the people who I know, I had to see them go down into the ground. And I spent part of, mainly half, more than half of my leave going to funerals. And I said to God, God, please hold back the debt. I can't bear it no more. And this year, I haven't known anyone so far who was very close to me, who has passed, I think maybe just one, or um, no, I, I don't know. It's not as been a, a nowhere as bad as it was last year. I thank God. But it shows that God, God here and answer prayer. I am assured to you, my brethren, that God is a prayer answering God. He's a God that answers prayer. So I'm going to stop right there because I see Pastor Winston, I see Sister McLean. God bless you, Sister Rose and others, PT. God bless you. I'm going to have Sister McLean to speak before I turn over to Pastor Winston who may say a few words. Sister McLean, God bless you. I'm going to stop there and hand over to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord be the glory. Amen. I will join with the son of David who said, Son of David. Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Yes. And his mercy is endured forever. Let the redeem of the Lord said so. Yes. He had redeemed out of the hands of the enemies. Praise God. I just want to greet you all in the sweet and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. It is a good thing to know the Lord and know who he is for ourselves. Amen. Greet you, my dear Brother Thompson. God bless you. And Sister Rose, Pastor McCann, and if there is any other guest on this platform, I greet you well in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Giving him thanks, giving him the glory for allowing us to see this another day. A day that he did not promise to us, but because of his grace and his mercy, praise God, we can say, to God be the glory. And had it not been for the Lord, who is on our side, where will we be? But through it all, through it all, we have learned to trust in Jesus. Yes. And we have learned to trust in God. And because of His goodness, not our goodness, and His love towards us, praise God, we can lift up holy hands even now to say thank you, Jesus, for life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the storm yes. that you have brought us through. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. And all as I've been listening to you, Brother Thomason, um, I didn't know what uh, scripture you gave, but I found it um, from Genesis 13 to the Genesis 18. And as you were quoting about uh, the um, call of Abraham and Lot, uh, when God called out Abraham to go into a country that he knew not mm. of. But because of obedience, praise God, Abraham, Abraham take the journey. Yes. And he took his uh, maybe a lot with him, and I think Tira. And that was um, part of um, the um, quotation at church today. There were um, the ministers, a new minister came there, and she was, she was the one who gave the word. And she was uh, giving some short illustration about the same Abraham and what happened and coming back and hearing you 
I just love and say confirmation. Mm. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. And as I said, um, not even one righteous was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Not only righteous one, it was only Lot. Mm -hmm. Was the only one. And so the city was destroyed. But praise God today, we are still, we are still fighting our way. We are still telling the world yes. that there is a man named Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there is a place named hell. Mm -hmm. And and it is, when there is no return ticket from hell, it is a one way. Yes. Pray God. Once you go there, there is no return. Mm -hmm. And there is no repentance in the grave. And in bed, no one can give God thanks. And you know, the, the world is a so, the people, not the world, it, the people of the world are so mad. They are not concerned about the, 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 um, the promises of God and what is going to take place. And after that, there comes the judgment. Yes. They are just striving after position, wealth, and, yes. you know, enjoying themselves. Yes. You know, and so, you know, we have to pray for them as well. Yes. You know, we cannot, we, 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 we cannot help it. We who are in the light and we know the danger, you know, we have to pray for them and we can and encourage them mm -hmm. and tell them about what the after effect and yes. what will take place. Some don't believe because I was um, witnessing to a man one of the time and he was saying, say, don't believe there is life after death. When you're dead, you're dead. Mm -hmm. And nobody never returned from mm -hmm. the dead and say this and say that. You know, they are not conscious. You know, but the, the, the psalmist said, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Mm -hmm. You know, and we, we have to continue to keep on praying because we can see what is happening in our world today. You know. And because of um, the, the people, our people lack knowledge. They because we will perish. Because we don't have the understanding that Christ is real and hell is real. And we as Christians, we are to live our life to the fullest that we can. You know, people will talk about us and people will say things about us. But let us not worry ourselves because you know who you are in God. That's right. And you know where he have brought you from. Mm -hmm. And you know this was not your past condition. You wasn't like this before. But the Lord has humbled us. That's right. Praise that he has humbled us. Mm -hmm. And we are moving up the king's highway. And we want the world to see. And the people of the world to know that we are in the world. But we are not of the world. That's right. Amen. For the world is changing. But God never changed. Mm -hmm. You know. And I'm so glad to know that. I could join in this evening. You know. And to be a part of this great family. You know, and it is so good, brother Tom. So yes. mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't easy. That's right. Because I know, in this um prayer um prayer conference that you are doing, I know there are many obstacles. There are many obstacles. Mm -hmm. But you're faithful. You hold on. You sometimes it's only maybe three of you are two of you, but you never give up. That's you're right. just like Noah. He can knock him. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I know that sometimes you have more than enough. And God is going to send in more. Mm -hmm. You know? Amen. So keep on doing what you are doing. Yes. Because God has called you. It's not man. This Paul said the salvation that he has is not from man. It's God. And you know what the Lord has been doing in your life. Yeah. And you know where he has brought you from. You know, and we are praying with you and we are praying for you mm. that God will enlarge your course and your border as Jabez prayed unto the Lord. 
and the Lord heard Jabez. You know, because we are one in Christ. That's right. We are one in Christ. Amen. And so let us live as sisters and brothers. And continue to keep up the good work. Pastor McCann, I heard you. Love you. And, you know, God is good. God yes, is good. God yes. is good. I can say God is good. Coming from the rough side of the mountain, it could be only God. I can just could only say God's grace and mercy has brought me to mm. the storms. I've been through many storms. I've fallen down many times. Mm -hmm. I've been bruised. Mm -hmm. I've been battered. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I cannot see mm -hmm. the tears that are flowing mm -hmm. down. But praise be to God, I'm going to humble myself and wait upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. As the writer said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall, shall renew their, their strength. strength. They shall mount up with wings like, like an eagle. Mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm still in the race. Nobody told me that the road would be That's easy, right. But I don't believe that he'll carry me thus far and to leave me alone. God bless you all and keep us together as we fight this old fight of faith to lay hold on eternal life. Our Jesus is coming soon. And he's counting on us. And we do not want to be like one of the foolish virgins. That's right. God bless you. And God keep you all on this journey as we travel together in unity, in peace, and in love, and in oneness. God bless you. This is Matthew words in Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister McLean, my God. is a warrior. The warrior for Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And um, a great inspiration to us all. A woman who yes. goes, through, uh, goes through the fire and through the water. But nothing. Yes. That, you can tell that nothing deters Sister McLean. Nothing deters her. Nothing. Amen. My God. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister McLean. Keep Amen. on the firing line. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Winston, let's hear. Can I turn over to you now? Pastor Winston. Yes, greetings, greetings, greetings to everyone. Greetings, God bless you all. It now is that I could have been joining this evening. Yes, amen. It's all, about, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. We had a wonderful time in church today. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelsey preached and I was truly blessed. Amen. amen. Blessing. Wonderful day. Thank God for Jesus. There are a few words we the hear. What about Mr. Thomas was speaking? I'm talking about debt. A lot of debt this year. He went with a lot of funeral. I was just looking at this, this scripture, Zen Matthew, chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 4. But I just read a couple of verses here because I know that I know all that time. And seeing the multitude, he went up into the mountain. And when he, he went, he was said, he decided to come unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them to say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, when they came out of heaven. Blessed are the poor, for they shall be comforted. A lot of death going on these days. There are people passing. Oh, God. I love people from morning. When the Bible says, Talk to them, bless all of them, mourn, for they shall be comforted. Maybe you have death in your family, but don't worry. God will comfort you, God will see you too. And you will find that the man wants to die after death is in judgment. Yes. And you make sure, you make sure you are living a life that pleases unto God. Make sure you are following Jesus. Make sure he, he become your friend, your father, your king, everything to you. Make sure, make sure. God, there's so much people backsliding. So much people are going the wrong way. So much people are put sin through for righteousness. Ah, just to share the testimony with you guys, yeah? 
Try that. When you see somebody who invites us over, he's opening a restaurant. And you want us to come and look at it and give our input and go like a prayer. Help with that. That's what you think water. Mm. Just go like a prayer. And when I reach at the door, I said, something that right here. And I was shoving in my spirit. And you went in, look around, you were input and so forth and so forth. And um, the subject read, some of it just came in. And when the visitors came in, I said, uh, my spirit, don't be a witness. And Sister Kelsey read the subject of what's going on on the league gay and lesbian. And the visitors, she looked up in there, was. And he, there go, yeah, there go. My feet going wrong from the door. I know something was right. So, I pray for the shop and the, I look at coin cards, and that's about it. When I'm going through the door, the gentleman turned up. And when he, he turned up, he said, when the guy going to open to the owner? And then she could see straight that them on the gate. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I said, no, you tell me that this place is going to be a place where gay can come. Come to have their food. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, I'm not coming back. That's right. And I come back to, no, wait, I promise to come back to, to give up that blessing. But I said, I'm not coming back because mm -hmm. this place is not, not for me. But I'm glad that I got to my eyes. I got to give me spirit. God give us, God give us to me to show wrong from right. That's right. Show good from evil. So, God, not in those things. But God wants me to go and encourage him and pray with him and talk to him. But I'm so glad that God grants me to me, Regine. And I'm praying that God will grant him that you too, all of you too. So, we can go wrong from right. Evil from good. That's right. I thank God for the Holy Spirit in the mountain. That is living me. That show me wrong from right. I thank God for the mountain. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I thank God for His peace and love. And the word of God said, in said, my children, come unto me, all oh, your labor and labor laden, and I will give you rest. I, I, Jesus, will give you rest. Man can't give you rest. Pastor Kendall, Jesus himself, can give you rest. So whatever.